Thank you, Leo, uh, for this uh, detailed introduction, though I have not understood a single word. Uh, maybe just uh, Putin or just my last name, which you managed to pronounce it in the correct way, which is a very rare thing uh, with me here in Argentina. Uh, thank you, Alberto Leo, again for, for inviting me for uh, 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 for making a floor to be here uh, in, uh, in Cari. I know that the Eurasian project is one of your advanced ones because uh, as uh, we, we follow the invitations which you uh, sent to other colleagues, we know that uh, the uh, ambassador of uh, Georgia was here and the uh, deputy foreign minister of Ukraine was recently here, so I'm honored to be here. Uh, well, uh, you already mentioned the, uh, uh, the details of my, of my CV. Uh, I, I, I'm really sorry that I have to address this distinguished audience uh, in English. Uh, Spanish is my uh, uh, Achilles heel. I just arrived uh, three months ago. I have just started taking lessons uh, in Spanish, uh, and uh, there's a long way to do uh, until I can master my uh, my language. I don't have much time now for, for that, unfortunately, in anticipation of the G20 and President Putin's uh, visit here, and I apologize for that. We have uh, an excellent uh, interpreter uh, from the embassy uh, close to me, so if uh, you feel uh, more comfortable for you at some uh, moment to ask questions uh, in Spanish, uh, uh, please do, and then we can also interpret into Spanish uh, my answer. Uh, I don't know with what to start. Uh, my resume uh, was shared uh, with you by Lila. Uh, I can only add that uh, uh, I have always been multilateral. I'm a career diplomat. I'm uh, with the diplomatic service for more than 25 years already. I've never been posted uh, to the country where uh, uh, my bosses expected me to do bilateral things. Uh, so it's always been uh, multilateral departments uh, back in Moscow or New York, the Russian mission to the United Nations. Uh, uh, so uh, bilateral work is quite a, quite a challenge for me, especially that I'm not from the Latin American mafia, as we can say in the foreign ministry, neither do I uh, speak Spanish yet. So uh, it's, really, it's, really, it's really challenging, especially that uh, in uh, three weeks, in less than three weeks, uh, President Putin will come here. Uh, I arrived here with uh, with my wife. Uh, we waiting a baby in December, immediately after the G20 summit. So uh, from the summit, I will post to I didn't do anything. So I hope you saw the provocation of the Russians, the Russians enemies. So uh, so from immediately from uh, from the summit, I will go to kind of a kindergarten uh, and. We know that uh, he will be a boy, so people are smiling, proposing uh, the names like uh, uh, Vladimir Mauricio, because, I don't know, because, because our presidents will be. Uh, frankly, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, as far as my Spanish is concerned, because, uh, as, as I said, I started taking lessons, but uh, I have uh, two conditions. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, no homework, uh, because I don't live at home. Uh, in anticipation of this historic visit, I, I need to be in my office all the time. Uh, trust me or not, I don't know the names of the streets which are close to the embassy, maybe one or two. I know where Recoleta is because we are in Recoleta. If I turn left or right, I can, be, uh, I can lose, my, uh, lose my way. Uh, but certainly I hope that uh, after the summit, I will have more time to understand Argentina, to travel more. I've been nowhere beyond Buenos Aires yet, except uh, one province uh, of uh, San Luis, on the invitation of uh, the governor. And that was the uh, rare example of me getting out of the sea. Uh, certainly, I want to know Argentina more. Uh, I want to love Argentinian uh, people, uh, because we are really friends. Lila mentioned our strategic partnership. Uh, in December, uh, there will be uh, another in addition to uh, my, my son, will be another pleasant surprise for me, not only personal, but for uh, our peoples as well. And this is strategic partnership anniversary. Uh, we will mark uh, 10 years anniversary uh, since the uh, uh, Declaration of Strategic Partnership was signed. Uh, and uh, in 2015, a few months before the current administration came into power, we upgraded uh, these relations to the strategic partnership. Uh, just for, for a person uh, not in uh, the diplomatic service, uh, that may uh, sound like just me awarding 
what is the difference? Strategic partnership, partnership, uh, privileged partnership, uh, comprehensive, whatever. Uh, well, there are uh, certain uh, uh, peculiarities, specialities about this, but definitely I think the main point is that regardless of the political situation, neither in Argentina nor in Russia, uh, we uh, are friends and we will be friends and uh, we will do all we can to enhance our cooperation uh, in all the areas, all the areas, including uh, trade and economic, political, security, cultural, just you name it, any. Uh, our presidents already uh, met uh, two times this year. First one uh, was in January when President Macri visited Moscow with the official visit and that was uh, at that time when he invited President Putin to come. Uh, here to Buenos Aires with the official visit. Then they made on, met on the sidelines of the uh, BRICS, uh, uh, BRICS meeting in Johannesburg on the 12th of July. So this will be the third time uh, our president comes here. Uh, I will tell you uh, that uh, he, uh, we're still working on the program. Uh, yes, I do confirm that President Putin will come here on the 29th uh, of uh, November. Uh, will stay here for a few days. He will not, unlike some of other presidents, slash his program. Uh, to 24 hours maximum. He will stay here until the end of the summit. So my assumption is that he will leave by the end of the day of the 1st of December. Uh, uh, President, uh, President had other invitations uh, from uh, the Latin American countries, at least four more, uh, but he couldn't uh, visit other countries. Uh, the uh, schedule of the President of the Russian Federation is pretty much tight, like, like probably uh, other presidents uh, schedule, so he will come here directly from Moscow and leave at the end of the first after meeting with President Macri. Uh, we will have actually not only the G20 summit for president here, but also the traditional BRICS uh, leaders uh, meeting, which will anticipate the uh, G20 summit uh, in the morning of the 30th. And then Argentinian side proposed the official visit, but we understand there will be a lot of other leaders in the city. Uh, some of them will also have official visits, uh, so we are now working on uh, the uh, modus operandi which will cut off all the trimmings of the classical official visit uh, and uh, concentrate on the very specific issues, mostly uh, on the bilateral meeting between the presidents, which uh, most probably uh, will take place uh, in the evening of the 1st of December immediately or three, four hours after the end of the uh, G20 summit. So what Argentina side is proposing, the meeting of the uh, presidents for like half hour, then uh, press conference, uh, signing of the documents, uh, and the working dinner. So uh, the, uh, the meeting is not uh, so short, as you can imagine, uh, I mean, the, the, the initial 30 minutes. So uh, we certainly hope that it will be a good opportunity for the presidents to discuss all, everything and anything which is so important uh, uh, and which is in, uh, relates to the bilateral agenda. Uh, in previous years, uh, presidents, and I uh, refer not only to uh, our presidents, uh, started their conversations with political issues, which on, which, which is only natural. Uh, for the last few years, I think, uh, think uh, I think things changed dramatically. Uh, each time uh, President Putin met with President Macri, they started with the issues of trade, investment, economy. Uh, can be easily explained uh, both for Russia uh, and for Argentina. Uh, Argentina is experiencing uh, uh, turbulent times in terms of the, uh, you all know this, in terms of uh, the uh, economic and financial situation. Uh, vis a vis Russia, you also know that uh, the international situation is not easy. There are uh, attempts of uh, some other countries to isolate Russia, to punish Russia, to introduce sanctions against Russia. So I think Argentina and Russia are both interested nowadays uh, uh, to uh, be more friends, uh, not only on the political or security front, but also in terms of the economy, trade and investment. Uh, so this is point number one uh, with which uh, presidents start, uh, maybe with one exception, which is football. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this is also uh, very natural because Russia hosted uh, the World Cup, as you know, in 36. Uh, Argentinian fans uh, visited Russia, some of my friends from the foreign ministry as well, I know they uh, just uh, take leave, uh, bought the ticket and just went to Russia. And uh, 
you know, uh, many of them returned uh, without the stereotypes they had before leaving from Russia. Uh, I don't know who imagined what, but anyway, uh, all these uh, friends of mine uh, who stay in Buenos Aires and in Argentina, they tell me that uh, Russia, in reality, was uh, and is completely different from, from what they expected. Uh, president Macri is a fan of football. Last time President Putin met President Macri, uh, they discussed the uh, surprising Russian proposal uh, to host in Russia, fresh from the World Cup, uh, a special tournament uh, for the uh, South, uh, South American uh, uh, football teams, uh, national teams. Uh, the details are not yet known. This, uh, uh, this, uh, Cup of America, Libertadores Cup, uh, other football tournaments here, but uh, this is the way which, uh, in, uh, this is the style in which they uh, start uh, talking. Actually, when I presented my credentials to President Macri uh, two weeks after I arrived, I also advised some of his advisors uh, what would be the best way to open the conversation. And they told me, well, if you start with the political uh, or uh, security issues, maybe President Macri would say, uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, it's very interesting, but I don't have time to buy. So they advised me to start to start either from the economic issues or from the football. So which that's that's what I did. So first I briefed President Macri about this uh, Mr. Putin's proposal about the uh, football cup in Russia, and then we continued with economic issues. Uh, the jokes aside, Russia is interested uh, to come to the Argentinian market. There are uh, several huge Russian. Uh, um, trade, economic and investment uh, projects uh, on the table. Here, uh, when I uh, speak to other ambassadors, uh, sometimes this, uh, they say, well, uh, we have the presence of our business here, but uh, we will wait until next presidential elections. Uh, and when you ask them why, they say, well, uh, we don't know what will happen uh, if other, other uh, other people comment about uh, they may return protectionist measures, for example, and uh, it will be uh, not easy for us to work here. Uh, some people will say that, well, uh, the uh, business opportunities in some of the neighboring countries are better. For example, in uh, Paraguay, when everything is cheaper, uh, sal salaries are not so high, electricity uh, uh, costs very cheap, taxes, taxes are low, etc., etc. So that even the Argentinian business and Argentinian investment not to Argentina but to Paraguay or some other countries. So the message which we send uh, to our business from here is, is quite the opposite. Uh, just don't wait uh, because now there are business opportunities for, for uh, the Russian companies to come. The uh, market is not yet divided. Uh, it's a competitive one but uh, there are still opportunities, business opportunities uh, to, be, uh, to be here. If you just wait, maybe tomorrow will be too late. So. Uh, when we talk about the business and uh, uh, investment opportunities, uh, we mean a few, uh, several uh, uh, quite large-scale projects, which I already referred first, is uh, energy. Uh, and energy, uh, both in the way of the uh, nuclear energy and the uh, regular uh, electric energy. You know that 20% of energy in Argentina is produced on the uh, Russian equipment. And uh, here I refer to the uh, hydroelectric stations, mostly. Uh, as far as the nuclear energy is concerned, you know, there were lengthy negotiations years ago with Russia and China. Uh, then because of the uh, uh, dire financial situation, this uh, talks uh, have been frozen, suspended. Uh, but very recently we resumed the negotiations uh, because the Russian side is proposing a new formula which will not require uh, investments financial investments from the Argentinian side. And this formula sounds like a, a build own operate, which means that Russia will come here with its own investment, build a, a nuclear power plant, and will operate the plant and will sell the energy to Argentina. Uh, one of the, uh, I'm not a big specialist in this, but I can assume that this is uh, a lucrative proposal because one of the uh, big nuclear power plants will cost uh, five, seven billion US dollars. And this is the money uh, which is difficult to get uh, for Argentina and in some cases for Russia as well. But here's the proposal. Another proposal is to build uh, nuclear stations in a smaller scale size. Uh, and the third proposal is a floating uh, nuclear plant. Russia has already built one floating power plant, which is called Academic Lomonosov, 
And uh, the advantage of uh, this plant is that uh, it is, uh, uh, it's mobility and flexibility, if you wish, because you can move this floating power plant to any part of Argentina. Uh, and we know that Argentina is a big country. So uh, in the place where there are problems with uh, reducing electricity, nuclear plant can, the floating nuclear plant can be an answer. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, the deputy head of the uh, Rosatom, uh, the state uh, company, which is on the market for more than 70 years, uh, met with President Macri, and uh, they discussed uh, the uh, business uh, opportunities for the Russian uh, company to come here. Uh, in the basket for the presidents, we have two draft uh, documents on uh, the cooperation in the nuclear area. So this is uh, one of the examples uh, or where we can achieve uh, 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 tangible results. Uh, as far as the uh, regular non-atomic energy is concerned, uh, well, we have another company, uh, it's a Silovi Machine and Transmash Holding, different companies uh, which are uh, active uh, in this area. They already uh, participated uh, uh, in uh, uh, manufacturing and exporting to Argentina special equipment for the hydroelectric stations. Uh, and uh, I can say that our companies are planning to take part uh, in uh, five or six small bits uh, to, uh, um, uh, to uh, provide Argentinian hydroelectric stations with this uh, special equipment. Another area uh, of particular interest to the Argentinian side is infrastructure. Uh, well, I was told that uh, I'm not an expert to say whether it's uh, true or wrong, but I was told that uh, years ago Argentina had a very uh, efficient uh, railway uh, railways, uh, but then uh, because of the uh, truck uh, automotive lobby, uh, so this uh, uh, this railway system downgraded, unfortunately. But nowadays uh, uh, there's an interest from the Argentinian side to revive. Uh, this net of railways, especially, or maybe one of the reasons being the uh, Vaca Muerte, uh, which is a key national project, and uh, there are huge expectations, high expectations from the Argentinian uh, authorities that Vaca Muerte will help uh, to get out of the crisis. So, uh, one of the uh, big projects uh, which is on the table uh, is uh, building, uh, restoring, building the railway. Uh, from the port of Bahia Blanca to the uh, Vaca Muerta site. It's uh, 700 kilometers long, so it's uh, 550 kilometers uh, which need restoration and reparation, and 150 kilometers should be built from scratch. Uh, so the leading Russian state company, uh, Russian Railways, called RGD, is uh, one of the companies which is interested to participate in this. They were uh, in the city uh, last week. Last week. They were here last week also had the meetings uh, with the state and private partners uh, of uh, Argentina and certainly we hope that uh, this project can, can also fly. Uh, another prospective area uh, is uh, the building of the huge logistical port uh, on the river of Paraná. Uh, we're looking for the site now. Uh, Russia is a huge supplier of organic fertilizers to Argentina. Not uh, uh, in terms of the volume, not as huge as Brazil, for example. To Brazil, uh, this company, which is called Fosagra, one of the leading world companies in supplying fertilizers, uh, is uh, exporting uh, almost 1 million tons of organic fertilizer. Argentina, just 150 solid, so it's 8, 7 times less. Uh, but anyway, I, I would say that uh, Russia is different from other suppliers because our competitors, and I will know it, not. Uh, finger point, but they provide Argentina with non-organic fertilizers, which are very hazardous, uh, including for the health. Uh, we buy from Argentina agricultural products. We don't want our citizens, our children, uh, to eat uh, uh, fruits and vegetables which are poisonous and which are dangerous, and we don't want Argentinian kids also to be fed up on non-organic. Uh, uh, products uh, raised here. So, this is just uh, a dimension of what uh, Russia can bring in terms of advantage. So, we're talking about the building of the big logistical port on Parana River, probably uh, uh, not far from the Rosario port. We discussed different sites. So, it will ease the logistics of uh, uh, bringing Russian products, including fertilizers and diesel. 
to Argentina and also uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in the opposite direction it will be more easy in not Argentina but maybe combining some goods from Paraguay and uh, some provinces of uh, Paraguay or even Brazil uh, and Argentina and uh, to uh, export this agricultural and other goods uh, to Russia. Uh, well, for uh, for this project, project we estimate the investment uh, from uh, the Russian side uh, more than 100 million dollars. For the previous project, uh, which I mentioned, for the railways, for example, uh, it's uh, uh, it's around 750 uh, million US dollars. Uh, we are not talking about the manufacturing and supply in Argentina with the rolling stock, just for the railways, 750 million. Uh, as far as the atomic energy, well, it's hard to say. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, building one of the uh, reactors, if it's a big one, it's uh, five, seven billion dollars. Well, uh, if we uh, look into the uh, volume of trade between our countries, it's pretty much low. It used to be bigger, twice bigger, but then when ruble uh, fell uh, because of the exchange rate with the US dollar, it, it diminished two times. So it used to be two billion dollars, now it's less than one. So to be exact, last year it was $890 million. Uh, this year, uh, for the first 10 months, we uh, registered the growth, 23%, which is not bad. Uh, but even with this growth, it will be under or very similar to 1 billion. So certainly we can do more. Argentina and Brazil, how much is this? 20, 30 million, 30 billion dollars, something like this, or even more. With Germany, we have 50 billion dollars. And with China, it's, it's even hard to say. Uh, so uh, we can do better uh, and uh, certainly we hope that uh, when our presidents uh, meet in three weeks they will also discuss uh, and start a discussion with economic projects. Maybe uh, enough for the economics, I have like, like another maybe 10, 15 minutes for the rest. And this reflects the priorities by the way, trade, economy, the, the bigger chunk and then the small chunk for all the rest. So as far as the political dialogue, Okay, we have uh, the meetings of the presidents, we have all other meetings uh, uh, with the foreign ministry, we have a plan of consultations called political consultations, but in reality it's not only political, it's also economic and all other stuff, press information, for example, new challenges on France. So it's at the level of the directors of the departments, it's probably five to seven. So the plan will expire this year, we will sign the new one for another few years uh, during President uh, Putin's visit here. Uh, we are members of many similar uh, multilateral fora. Uh, mostly uh, all the politics is done in New York in terms of multilateral research, so it's the United Nations. Argentina is a long-standing supporter of uh, Russian initiatives at the UN, and what I'm talking about is three major UN, uh, Russian sponsored, sponsored UNJ uh, resolutions. Uh, one on the uh, international information security, which was put on board, by the way, uh, last Thursday, and Argentina again supported uh, the, Russia's, the Russia's draft. So it's international information security is another warning for the cyber security, which is a hot topic nowadays, if you can imagine. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, preventing uh, militarization of Nazism. Uh, uh, which is uh, also a very uh, topical issue. And the third one is uh, non-militarization of space, and exclusively peaceful use of uh, outer space. Uh, for years, Argentina uh, uh, supported this, uh, this, uh, this important Russian resolutions. We certainly hope uh, this uh, will continue. Uh, Russia uh, has, from uh, the outskirts, supported from inside uh, all the Argentinian priorities of the G20, all of them from the very beginning. Uh, and uh, uh, for, for another important for Argentina uh, issues were always with, uh, with you, uh, including uh, on the um, uh, status of the uh, Malvinas Islands. Uh, so uh, this, this dialogue uh, is uh, rolling on uh, without any pausing. Uh, uh, moreover, we hope that uh, we can upgrade this dialogue uh, to a new height and the President's Putin visit will give uh, an additional impetus to this. Uh, last but not least, uh, the third priority is the uh, security area. Uh, you know that uh, nowadays uh, you have multilaterals, bilaterals, nothing will uh, do without the new challenges and threats because the issues of terrorism, uh, international terrorism, uh, drug production and trafficking, uh, transnational organized crime, uh, 
cyber security and piracy, things like this are all uh, the negotiations. So uh, these are transborder, transnational issues which have been widely discussed everywhere. The first, uh, the very first draft document which I presented uh, Mr. Fari when I uh, visited him on my first working day was the uh, draft bilateral uh, agreement uh, on cooperation in fighting international terrorism. This is uh, a special issue. Uh, on the one hand, Argentina uh, so far does not have any, any, I stress this, any bilateral agreement on cooperation in, uh, in, in fighting terrorism. It, it seems strange to me personally because Argentina, as Russia, uh, has been the victim for a ter of terrorist attacks in the 90s uh, and uh, there is a requirement of the uh, United Nations Security Council resolutions, which are mandatory, uh, that states, all states, regardless of the level of the threat, uh, should demonstrate the effective bilateral cooperation of country terrorism. Russia uh, has long been a victim of, uh, of uh, terrorism inside the country, uh, has a unique experience in combating terrorism both inside and outside of the country. Uh, so there's a lot we can share with our Argentinian friends. Uh, well, the process of uh, negotiations are underway. Uh, well, somebody uh, should be first. Uh, maybe not us, maybe, uh, maybe China, maybe United States, Japan, I don't know. But states, as I say, should demonstrate that uh, their um, systems to combat terrorism are effective. Uh, on on counterterrorism, there is also uh, a well-known uh, Federal Security Service of Russia established 10 years ago, uh, the International Database on Countering Terrorism. Uh, 41 special um, uh, and law enforcement services from 35 countries are members of this database which uh, uh, consists of uh, tons and tons of uh, information about foreign terrorist fighters, about international terrorist organizations and things like this. It's free of charge, uh, it's bigger than Interpol uh, and um, uh, what we discussed with Argentinian colleagues uh, is the possibility of joining this uh, database uh, which is to one extent to, um, uh, which is similar to Interpol, but as I said, it's even bigger because uh, Interpol is just one of the members of, of our database. Uh, another area is um, uh, drug production and trafficking. Probably you've heard about the first uh, Russia -Argentina, Russian Argentinian successful uh, operations to combat the, uh, uh, the delivery of the uh, almost 400 kilos of cocaine. Uh, from uh, from Colombia uh, to uh, through Argentina uh, to Russia and then to uh, some of the European countries. Or uh, at the same day, way I visited uh, Mr. Macri and presented him with my credentials. This particular morning, I was at the Chacarita Cemetery with the uh, Minister of um, uh, Security, Ms. Bullrich, where we destroyed together this uh, 400 kilos of cocaine in the crematorium. So I probably I didn't feel well enough when I visited. Uh, President Mark related to this day, because this is a joke. Uh, so what uh, what we are explaining to our um, uh, to our colleagues in Argentina is that well the uh, the nature of the uh, uh, drugs threat uh, to Russia and Argentina is different because for Russia the main problem is uh, drugs from Afghanistan uh, and it's heroin and for Argentina it's uh, mainly cocaine from uh, the neighboring countries. But uh, both Russia and Argentina are countries of consumption and transit, so there's enough uh, prerequisites uh, for the uh, cooperation in this area. Uh, cyber security, information security, uh, well, this is, as I said, this is, you, you also you follow the news, this is really a, a hot topic. And uh, we are now uh, discussing with the Argentinian uh, friends the possibility of uh, working on the kind of the uh, intergovernmental agreement which Russia already have, has with other countries, including in the region, like Brazil or Cuba. Uh, so uh, on, on security, this dialogue uh, is, uh, has more prospects uh, to enhance, mainly in the area of uh, the new challenges and threats. Uh, as far as the uh, classical military technical cooperation, uh, well, uh, there's not much to say. Uh, Argentina uh, is not in a financial situation when uh, uh, it will be free to buy anything. Uh, um, we, uh, we 
made the contract uh, six years ago in 2012 uh, when Argentina acquired three Russian uh, helicopters MI-171E in Arctic design which have been used for the Arctic operations uh, of uh, the uh, Argentinian military. We uh, maintain conversations about uh, buying two more helicopters uh, which uh, were highly appreciated by both by the Argentinian pilots and by the uh, military command of Argentina. But again, uh, there's not much to discuss in this, uh, this financial uh, 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 during this financial crisis situation, but we always tell, tell Argentina is that as strategic partners, we are ready to supply Argentina with the uh, most sophisticated weapons without any political conditions. So this uh, stands on the table. Uh, beyond these uh, three priorities, and I think to, I need to wrap up in another three minutes, beyond these priorities, I think the life of every ambassador uh, here uh, is wider, is bigger, uh, because we need to be everywhere, um, you know, promote the relations in every area, sports, uh, you know, Russian uh, Youth Olympic team was here recently and uh, both Russia and Argentina demonstrated very, uh, very big uh, successful results, unlike our football teams uh, in Moscow, but uh, Youth Olympics were really good, you know, Russian, uh, Russian uh, uh, tango uh, uh, pair. For, for the very first time in history, uh, uh, got a victory at uh, the uh, World Tango uh, competition uh, just two, three months ago. And this is also a reflection that uh, uh, Argentinian people are so friendly. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is the uh, homeland of tango. And uh, Argentinian referees uh, and the audience uh, did not give the victory to their compatriots, but rather, rather to the uh, Russian base. It's, it's, it's really uh, fantastic. Uh, we, need, we need also to move on other areas like culture and arts, and I have already, in three, in three months, I, I had time to open at least four exhibitions uh, on Russian uh, uh, history, uh, geography, ethnography, and uh, one of them uh, being at the uh, National Congress. So we see there is an interest uh, to Russia. 78% uh, of the Argentinian population, according to the uh, mass media, uh, feels uh, positively uh, towards Russia. Uh, that's very similar to the feelings uh, towards China, uh, uh, but different uh, in, a, in a better way uh, from the uh, perception of other major powers. So there is a good uh, uh, there is a good prerequisite, a good uh, fundamental prerequisite for us to continue uh, to continue to be friends. We know there is a huge interest uh, to the Russian language. Uh, for example, when I uh, made the lecture at the university at uh, 1,000 kilometers from here in uh, San Luis, uh, I was told that 100 students in the university are studying Russian if compared to 50 students who study Chinese. For example, uh, so in other universities we have the same picture. Uh, on the margins of the uh, uh, President Putin's uh, visit here, uh, we plan to open the uh, Russian center of the Russian world, Ruski Mir, Russian Mir, uh, in the University of the Buenos Aires, uh, which already uh, provided us uh, with the uh, uh, possibility to be there. Uh, and uh, we will bring Russian, uh, Russian teachers, Russian books, and uh, we are delighted that Russia is of particular interest to the uh, Argentinian uh, partners. So uh, this, uh, this marks the end of my introduction. I don't know whether it was long or okay. Perfect. Perfect, okay. So uh, again, let, let me finish with what I started, uh, that regardless, regardless of any uh, political developments uh, in, uh, in Russia or Argentina, we certainly hope that we will continue to be uh, bigger friends. And this is my main mission. This is why I'm here. I don't have any hidden agendas. We don't need Argentina uh, uh, for any other purpose than uh, to be friends. We don't need Argentina to be enemies with someone else, with our enemies. No, nothing like this. Again, there's no hidden agenda. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, all together we can do more to upgrade our relations to a new height. Thank you. And now I'm uh, just ready to answer your questions. Please.